Good morning, IB Math. Well, we can't talk about trig without talking about the unit circle. Um, it's a huge part about trig, and there's just some things that we just need to, to know. Um, so after this lesson, I'm going to upload a blank unit circle, a PDF, and just a little mini lesson on the unit circle with all of the angles. Um, what is a unit circle? A unit circle is a circle centered at the origin that has a radius of one, a unit. And this is going to tie very closely into trig and all the things in trig. Uh, the other thing that we need to know is three basic triangles from geometry. So um, let me draw all three triangles that we need to know. These were special right triangles. And they are the, the triangle that is the 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90 triangle again, but with the 60 degree angle oriented down here. Now, think about putting each of these triangles into the first quadrant. The important thing is that this side will be the unit one. So what will the other sides be? Well, we have to think back to geometry for a moment. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we were told that, uh, that this side was 1 and 2 and root 3. Those were the ratios, 1, 2, and root 3. Well, I don't want it to be 2. I want it to be 1. How do I, go, how do, I do that? I have to divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. And root 3 divided by 2 is root 3 over 2. Oh, a little messy in there. Sorry about that. In the 45, 45, 90 triangle, I was told that um, this is 1 and 1 and the square root of 2. But I want it to be 1. Well, how do I get 1? Divided by root 2. So this is going to be 1 over root 2. Well, that's no good. I want to multiply it by root 2 over root 2. And I get root 2 over 2. And of course, this is going to be the same side, root 2 over 2. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, it's the same as this but just with the sides in a different place, this will be my 1 half and my root 3 over 2 side. So if I take these and put them into the unit circle, I'm going to get in the first quadrant, and I want to emphasize, I just want to focus on the first quadrant, and if you know the first quadrant, then you know them all. You really do. All right, so let's see. Do I have a, a different colors here? If I do the 30, then I know um, from my triangles. Let's see, can I get all this on one page? There we go. So my 30, this is root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So the coordinates here are going to be root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. On my 60, uh, on my 45 degree angle, I know that this the coordinates here are going to be root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. And then on my um, 60 degree angle, I know that my coordinates here are going to be 1 half, comma root 3 over. Two. The other angles that I uh, automatically know, I know that this, the coordinates here, are going to be 1, 0. The coordinates here would be 0, 1. Now, now what angle would that represent? It's not 0. It would be a, a 90 degree angle. And then over here would be negative 1, comma, 0. And here would be 0, comma, negative 1. What would this angle be? 180, 270, 360. Or, better, to think about it in terms of um, radians. Radians would be a better way of thinking about it. All right, so let's spend some time talking about quadrants and circles and all that information. So we're going to draw a bunch of these, and I'm going to, rather than trying to do it all in one diagram, I'm going to overlap it a lot. So first, I just want to look at a coordinate axis in general. And in a coordinate axis, I know that... Um, I've got the first quadrant, 
second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. And as I take a look, any point, any location in space is an x and a y value. Well, in this quadrant, my angles are going to be less than 90 and greater than 0. In radians, that would be less than pi over 2 and greater than 0 pi. In the second quadrant, all the angles over here are less than 180, because that would be 180, greater than 90. In radians, less than pi, greater than pi over 2. In the third quadrant, my angles would be less than, uh, let's see, 270 degrees, but greater than 180. In radians, would be, um, would be greater than pi, less than 3 pi over 2. And then in the fourth quadrant, my angles would be less than 360, but greater than 270 degrees. In radians, that would be 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. So that tells me the range of angles inside each of the quadrants. Now let's take a closer look at the x and the y values. So I'm going to do this graph again, but this time I'm going to talk about x and y values in each of the quadrants. And this, this I think we know. This, this is something right out of geometry again. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. In quadrant 1, my x values are positive, my y values are positive. In quadrant 2, my x values are negative, but my y values are positive. In quadrant 3, the x is negative and the y is negative. In quadrant 4, the x goes back to being positive, but the y is still negative. All right. Um, so let's kind of put this together, and now let's start talking about the angles on the unit circle. And if I'm moving too fast, you can always pause the video and go back. So if I have any old angle, and I'm just going to kind of randomly draw an angle in here, call it theta. This point has some coordinate x and y. And if I know the coordinates, or if I know whether they're positive or negative, then I'm going to know what quadrant it's in. For example, if I tell you that both the x value and the y value at that point, uh, the terminal point, are negative, you know it's in the third quadrant. So you know the angle is between pi and 3 pi over 2, or between 180 and 270 degrees. The x value is that and the y value is that. All right, so, so think about these. Um, and now, let's talk, and oh, and remember, very important, the radius is 1, because it's a unit circle. All right, so the radius is 1. So now let's focus on the angles and start talking about the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse, y over 1. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 1. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, y over x. And of course, cotangent would be the inverse of that, secant would be the inverse of that, cosecant would be the inverse of that. In the other quadrants, x and y values could be negative. In fact, here they're both going to be negative. Here, the x values are negative, but the y values are positive. And here, the x values are positive, and the y values are negative. So given the unit circle, we can find the sines, the cosines, and the tangents. Now, uh, let's, let's talk about the sine, S-I-G-N, in the unit circle. I'm going to do another overlaying of the unit circle, another unit circle here. And now I want to think about the sine, cosine, and the tangent of my different angles. So, uh, and I want to know positive or negative. So, so here, would my sine be positive? Well, sine is just the y value. So in this quadrant, oh, let me use a different color. The sine is positive, 
cosine is positive, tangent would be positive. Over here, sine is the y value. The y value is still positive, but the cosine would be negative. The tangent is the sine over the cosine. The tangent would be negative. Here, sine is negative. Co uh, the y value, cosine, x value is negative. The tangent, negative over negative, would be positive. Here, the sine is negative. The cosine is positive. The tangent, negative over positive, would be negative. There's a, a kind of a little acronym or a way of remembering this. Um, uh, and it's uh, uh, all students take calculus. Go in quadrant order. One, two, three, four. All students take calculus. All of them are positive. Only sine is positive. Only tangent is positive. Only cosine is positive. So now if we look at the sine of an angle and we know it, or, or the cosine of an angle, or the tangent of an angle, and we know whether it's positive or negative, we know what quadrant it's going to be in. All right, here comes another overlay. Um, and now I want to get a little bit more specific. I want to look at uh, the unit circle, and I'm going to pick a specific angle out of the unit circle. We already, remember we did this overlay, where we know all of these points. So I'm going to pick one of those angles that we've already done. Let's use a 60 degree angle. And we know my ratios are 1 um, and 1 half and root 3. The coordinates of that point right there are going to be 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Oh, I forgot over 2. All right, so now put it all together. We're going to put it all together right now. What is the sine of 60 degrees? What is the cosine and the tangent? The sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2 over 1, or really just the y value. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 half over 1, or really just the x value. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. So think about it as root 3 over 2 over 1 half. Flip it and cancel the 2's and I would get root 3. We can find the sine, cosine, and tangent of all of these angles, 30, 45, and 60, and not only all of those, but all of the angles over here, and here, and here. The only difference is going to be, for example, what would be the same angle over here if if this angle is 60, what is this angle? Well, this part would be 60 here, so this would be 120. What are the coordinates of that point? It's going to be the same 1 half root 3 over 2, but what's the big difference going to be? The SIGN sign, negative 1 half root 3 over 2. So now, tell me, what is the sine of 120, cosine of 120, and the tangent of 120? Well, the sine's going to be the same. But will it be the same S-I-G-N sine? Yes, it's going to be positive, root 3 over 2. Cosine is going to be the same, adjacent uh, over hypotenuse. But will the SIGN sign be the same? No, it's going to be negative. The tangent will be the same, but tangent is negative, so negative root 3. Once you know all of them in the first quadrant, you know them all. You know all the angles. All right, um, let's do just a couple of uh, random angles here and talk about them. So I want to know what is the the sine of 225 degrees, the cosine of 225 degrees, and the tangent of 225 degrees. Now, pre-calc students, I expect you to, to know this one off your head straight away. Um, everybody else, for the rest of us mere mortals, we might want to actually draw this angle. 220 degrees, what, what uh, quadrant is that in? And we should realize that it is in the third quadrant. That's 180, this would be 45. 
All right, so go to work here. This is 1, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, but this would be negative and negative. Go back root 2 over 2, down root 2 over 2. So what's the sine opposite over hypotenuse? Basically the y value, negative root 2 over 2. What's the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse? Basically the x value, negative root 2 over 2. What's the tangent? Opposite over adjacent. Tangent's positive, negative over negative. Root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2 would be positive 1. All right, um, let's see. Let's, let's do another one. Let's do, um, um, let me see. I'm going to mix it up on you here a little bit. Let's do the sine of 11 pi over 6 the cosine of 11 pi over 6, and the tangent of 11 pi over 6. All right, 11 pi over 6, we have to start thinking in terms of uh, radians now. What quadrant is that going to be in? Fourth quadrant. What's my reference angle going to be? Well, this would be pi over 6. And this would be 11 pi over 6. So pi over 6 is like my reference angle. Now I have to think, well, what are the, now, now I know that the uh, hypotenuse is going to be 1. What are the other sides going to be? Well, if you need to think about it in degrees, go ahead and do that. Uh, pi over 6 would be uh, 30 degrees. So if I'm thinking about a 30 degree uh, triangle down there, um, I'm going to have uh, one half and root three over two. How about the, the, the sine SIGN signs? Well, the x value would be positive, the y value would be negative. The hypotenuse is always going to be a positive one, isn't it? All right, so now given all this information, what is the sine of 11 pi over 6 and the cosine and the tangent? All right, so the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, basically the y value, negative 1 half. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 1, basically the x value, root 3 over 2. Tangent, tangent negative in that quadrant. Opposite over adjacent, uh, negative 1 half um, over, uh, uh, so let's see, let me do negative 1 half over root 3 over 2 which is going to give me what? Uh, flip it, and I get um, negative 1 over root 3, which is negative root 3 over 3. All right, we should be able to do all of these different angles by looking at, by comparing them to the ones that we know in the first quadrant. So in exercises 6E, problem number one is you're going to have to write down, well, what quadrant is each of the angles in? Problem number two, now in problem number two, it asks you to find out uh, sine, cosine, and tangent um, of different angles when it gives you just one thing. Uh, I, I'd like you to use exact values whenever you can. Um, stay away from just plugging everything into the calculator. Number three, um, given uh, uh, the sine of an angle, kind of work backwards to find out what that angle is using inverse sine, and remember S-I-G-N, where is that angle, what quadrant? If the sine is negative, what quadrant is it in, and so on. And um, for, for problem number four, I want to do a problem similar to number four, and let's say that um, theta is acute, and the, the sine of theta is uh, four-fifths. And I want to find the cosine and tangent. All right, so I've got an angle. It's an acute angle. So here's a theta that's an acute angle. The sine is four-fifths. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse is four-fifths. So a little bit of Pythagorean theorem here. How much is that missing side? This is a nice, well-behaved triple. We should automatically know that that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So what is the cosine of theta? What is the tangent of theta? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 3 fifths. 
the tangent is opposite over adjacent, four-thirds. Now, if it was an obtuse, if it was in the second quadrant, um, cosine would be negative and so would tangent. All right, so play around with those and now go ahead and um, do 6e. All right, good luck and I will talk to you again soon.